Hello, friends. It's now 12.02, zero hours and two minutes. And, Pastor Marcos, every night the line is short because the majority of people right now, they are on their bed sleeping. God is looking for those who are calling upon his name in the middle of the night. That's the reason why when we get up to pray at this hour, we are on the altar right now. Our wives are on the altar as well. We have the other pastors here as well. And we know that when we get up, when we come out of our bed to pray at this hour in the middle of the night, the answer comes faster. Even the Bible says like this in the book of Malachi, verse, uh, chapter 3, verse 4, verse 18. Then you shall again discern between the righteous and the wicked, between one who serves God and one who does not serve him. We see that this verse has everything to do with us and also Gideon. When the angel turned to Gideon and said, The Lord is with you, mighty man of value. In other words, servant of God. God is with you. You are his servant and he will defend you. He will protect you. But he turned to the angel and said, How can I be a servant of God? If... I see wickedness. What is happening or supposed to be happening to me are happening to others because I serve God. God is my Lord. We are children of God, but my life has been resembling those who do not serve Him. There was no difference. That was mm -hmm. what He was complaining about. And there are many people right now watching us that they claim to be God's servants, but they are not seeing the difference that Gideon was complaining with God about where are all your wonders, where are all the miracles that I have heard you performed in the past. Why is it you are not performing in my life if you say I am a warrior, if you say I am a mighty man of valor, if you say you are with me because the difference is there. The righteous and the wicked. The one who serves and the one who does not serve. How can God be with you and does not make your life to differ from the life of those around you? How can God be with me and I do not see what is written coming to pass in my life? That was Gideon's complaint. Because if you see many people, they serve God. They go to church, they come to the church, hallelujah, praise the Lord, they sing in the choir, they serve God as usher, assistant, helper, they do everything. But as you said, there is no difference. Their lives do not differ from the one who live in a rented place. They have a key of a house, but that house is not theirs. They, they say, I have a business, I'm a servant of God, but their business do not profit. They have been hungry. They have been depending on others. So how can I be a servant of God? And instead of to live in total dependence of God, I have to hide myself in a cave because I'm not living. The place where I am is not livable. I have been hiding myself. The, the, the car that I drive is not drivable because it is falling apart. Every time this car leaves me on foot, so, so many people, they have been serving God, but there is no difference between them and the one who does not serve God. So, friend, look, this is what Gideon was trying to express to the angel. Where is the God that my fathers taught me how to serve? As we were telling people this week now, many parents, they teach their children how to cook how to uh, 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 write, how to read, how to do a lot of things. But many of them, they like to teach their children how to serve God. And to serve God demands action. To serve God demands boldness, courage, determination, focus. When Gideon heard the voice of God and he decided to believe, he understood that complaining was not enough. He understood that relying on one day seeing the difference, you know, without doing what was required was not going to happen. So that understanding led him to the one place that his life could be totally transformed, the altar. That's to serve. Exactly. He served 
God on that moment, on that day, on that hour, midnight, he was there with the ten men serving God. When he obeyed, he was serving. Exactly. He ter- he- you know, he destroyed the altar bell, he cut down the Asherah pole, and he began to build the altar of God, serving God. He began to apply the guidance, the instruction. He followed the direction given. He put more of his effort into doing what God told him to do than into asking what he wanted from God because he knew of God's wonders. He knew that God was going to amaze him with things far beyond he could ask about. So he understood if I put all my strength into what God is telling me to do, I will see the difference the word is telling me about. So friend, the bottom line is, if you are a servant of God, your life is supposed to be equal to the lives of a true servant of God. You are supposed to serve God with actions. You are supposed to serve God with your sacrifices. You are supposed to serve God with what he's asking you. It's not what you are going to ask because a servant should not be worried about what he will ask. But he has to be worried about what his master, what his God is going to ask him. Because this master of yours, the one that you are supposed to be serving, he has the power to give to you beyond what you request, beyond what you need, beyond what you want, but you have to meet his expectations as a master, as a servant as you are. If you want to have a life of a true servant, what you have to do, you have to serve your Lord, your God, as my friend, a true servant, as Gideon did when you serve him on the altar. And the day appointed for us to serve God on the altar is on the 12th. On the 12th, we are going to climb to serve him, to serve him with our bull, to serve him with our sacrifices. And then God will give charge to his angels to serve us with what we want. God will come to meet that person. On the 12th, God will come to say, now this matter is no longer yours, it's mine. You are my servant, I will take care of you. You heard my voice, you did what I told you to do, you were mindful of the guidance I have given, so now I'll take care of the rest. You did your part, you prove yourself to be a servant, you prove yourself to be a mighty man of valor, a mighty woman of valor, now I'll prove to you that I am God. So my friend, if you want God to prove himself to you, Prove him. Put him to the test on the altar. And I guarantee you that you will not just see, but you are going to take possession of what he has promised to you. There will be a difference between you and the one who do not serve. There will be a difference between your own house to the house of others who do not serve God. There will be a difference between what you drive and what others who do not serve him drives, and so on in your business, in all the areas of your life, you will be able to defer between you who serve him and to those who do not serve him. Grab your envelope in your hands, grab the word of God, stand on the promises of God, because we are going to ask him, my friend, to show us this difference in our lives. Close your eyes now. God, So many people, they are praying together with us and there is no difference between them who supposedly serve you and those who do not. Those that, my God, they have been walking with your words. They have been standing upon your promises. They have been coming to the church day and night. But deep down, God, they like to serve you with action. And that's the reason why many people, they have been in church for so long, for the past 20 years, 21 years, 22 years, 10 years, 5 years, 1 year. And yet, they still struggling a lot. Yet, they still cannot provide to their families. Yet, my God, their situation has been very bad. 
they are in a bad shape because my lord we cannot be serving you with the mouth we cannot be serving you with the prayers we are supposed to serve you with actions we have to serve you my lord with attitudes and lord god we are here teaching your people based my lord upon your words teaching them what to do and how to do in order for them to see wonders in order for them to receive my lord in their lives even what they have not requested for them to receive it beyond what they have been asking you and my lord in fact we should not even be worried to ask because my lord we as a servant true servants of yours we are supposed to be worried to attend Attend your petition to answer your expectations and also what you have been requesting of us in the name of Jesus God open the understanding open the mind of your people as you have opened the mind of Gideon Gideon if you obey my voice you will be able to see my wonders in your life if you do what I'm telling you to do you will be able to have the Midianites the people of the East and also your other enemies delivered into your hands and in order for us to defeat all our enemies my God we are supposed to serve you the right way we are supposed my Lord to build our altar in the proper with the proper arrangement as you want and then we are going to be able to see the extraordinary in our lives so God bless those who are standing upon your promise those who are in this faith to serve you on the 12 with their perfect sacrifice and we have the total assurance that God they will see your greatness your extraordinary wonders in their lives in the name of the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit and if you believe say amen amen so my friend we have come to the end of our prayer our participation here now in the 12 o'clock prayer today is Thursday and you cannot forget that Thursday we have the therapy of love every Thursdays we have family service and also we have the therapy of love we pray for the family help people with the family issues during the day and five o'clock shop we have uh, uh, supplying the needs of those who have love life or relationship even marital problems yes indeed we advise we guide we inspire we motivate we enlighten people's thoughts concerning their love life because once God brings to you a word it is able and powerful enough to restore your relationship to it to make you see a future because many people pastor philip they see no future when it comes to love life they say no my love life is in god's hands god willing one day i will find the right person they 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 have not been worried about it because everyone that came into their lives they had come into their lives the wrong person exactly the thing the point i want to raise here is one pastor phil they want to find the right person but instead they have to become the right person mm -hmm. so the therapy of love is to enable them to become the right person because when they become the right person to find the other part the other uh, the other sock because mm -hmm. every sock has a pet to find the other one will be easy because you have become the right one so today you are going to become the right person you are not going to be seeking happiness you are going to be happy to make someone else happy so my friend we are going to see you and we are going to be all together in the therapy of love we are going to be teaching you how to become the right person to make the other person happy have yourself a very blessed morning see you you cannot start your day without the workers prayer monday to saturday 5 30 a.m subscribe to our youtube channel universal church trinidad and tobago
Before coming to the Universal Church of the Kingdom of God, my life was totally destroyed. I was a teacher, a graduate, a teacher, working. But at the end of each and every month, I would come home penniless. All of my salary would go to the cash loans, the loan sharks, to an extent that most of the times, I would buy things, furnitures and stuff, but they would be repossessed and I would be left with nothing. That led me into losing jobs and moving from one job to another because mostly I was running away from the irresponsibility of my finances that I was facing. Because of the, my financial situation, firstly, I lost respect for everyone who thought is having respect for me. My family members, my parents, my brothers and my sisters, I'm not talking about the community and my colleagues, so to speak, the, my friends that I used to go to school with and that I graduated with because my life was meaningless and they were progressing in front of me. It had an effect on my child. Uh, as it was a humiliation, I was not able to take my child to the school that supposedly was supposed to be because of my qualification and the way I was working. But at some point in time, I had to take him and make him heal live with my parents than to live with me. At some point in time, after losing one of the jobs that I was doing, after being repossessed of every kind of furniture that I bought because of the accounts, debts, and the lack of money that I had, I decided it's time to change my life. Then I was invited to the Universal Church of the Kingdom of God. The moment I get into the spiritual treatment, I felt something was living my life. Something was, was different. I went to different chains of prayers. As far as I can remember, there's none that I didn't attend. But especially Mondays and Wednesdays and Fridays, I never did the campaign. And several campaigns passed by and my life was standing still. It is at this point that one day I decided I'm sick and tired of hearing how great this God through the campaign of Israel is working and is transforming at the same time changing people's lives and nothing was happening to my life. I decided 2004 that with all of my strength I'm going to do and I'm going to participate in this campaign of Israel fully wholeheartedly and without when I say without not anything without anything. I threw myself into the campaign of Israel. That was the start of my transformation of my life. To fulfill my vow, at that point in time, I was still working. I was a teacher. This campaign was taking place in December. That's the time that I was supposed to be getting a bonus from my work. Then I put out my salary altogether. I took my savings. The money that you as the women that are working, you know we do it. The so-called umkalelo, we club together, and then we have the money that we divide at the end of the year. It was divided. I got my share. I put it my share on my envelope. And guess what? It was not enough. As far as the vow that I said I'm going to make and I'm going to, I'm going to test if, this is, if I do it, what God is going to do. I went out. I thought. I was living near the beach. It was in December, and I collected ice creams. I collected Russian sausages, and I was selling to the people on the beaches where I was living. As a result, my vow eventually was fulfilled. That first campaign, I call it a first campaign because that was the first campaign that I, I really did it. When I fulfilled it, great as it was and challenging as it was, but I felt a lot of joy. Immediately I submitted my sacrifice, I felt joy. I thought I'm supposed, I was going to cry. And I promised myself I'm going to cry to God a lot because I was left with nothing. But instead I was full of joy. After submitting my full sacrifice, God brought me an idea of opening my own business. My company was registered in 2005 in January. The campaign that I fulfilled was in 2004 in December. And that company today that I registered in 2005 turned out to be, though I registered it as a skills development center, turned out to be a school, which today is a very great school in East London.
every time I participate in the campaign of Israel and I fulfill my vows, God never fails to bless me. I got married, I've got a family, a blessed family. I've got a big house. I'm owning properties. I've got cars. My life is just, it's just blessed. In fact, it's not blessed today, it's a blessing. And God has never failed me. I would repeat this, because now I'm involved in another form of company, the steel service structural company. I'm doing steels. I'm selling steel to the public. So God is, is, is really, really honoring me and blessing me. To the people that are facing the same situation that I used to face, history can be changed. God changed my history. Today, I'm a new person. Through the campaign of Israel, I always say, I find it as the only step ladder that can transform people's lives. Bye.